The cube and the sphere are the sole working tools of creation. Electricity is the only force the Creator uses to perpetually create creation throughout eternity. The Creator's thinking is electric and is controlled by the Creator's omnipresent stillness. The Creator controls creation from within and without. The universal mind is pulsing electric spiraling motions that give form to what mankind calls matter and space. The very foundations of the electric universe are perpetual pulsing electric motions. Our ever-changing electric universe of sex-divided spiraling electric light motions is under the complete control of the Creator's immutable and eternal sexless magnetic light universe of absolute cold, stillness, and zero curvature geometries. Magnetic light cubes compress and freeze all electric motions into sphere and ring systems, which we observe populating the infinity of space. This image by Walter Russell is rich in detail, showing how spiraling electric vortices in the three dimensions of cubic wave fields produce electric rings and spheres whose wave fronts pass through each other unobstructed and create electric light lenses which expand and compress these spiraling electric waveforms to produce all possible geometries found throughout the infinite universe. The electrical pressure gradient shown here describes how curvature within cubic wave fields is a product of imbalance of spherical centers of high electric potential and the space surrounding them, which decreases in electric potential by the square of the distance, thereby creating curved, so-called lines of force surrounding these bodies. The positive sign represents the electric north of all wave fields, and the negative sign represents the six cathode faces of the cube which are the south direction of motions from the center. These curved electrical pressure gradients have been falsely defined by academia as magnetic fields and are in reality gravity controlled rings of spiraling electricity. Magnetism is cathode planes of stillness, not a force. North and south gravity poles of magnetic stillness control the sex-divided electric spinning rings which form spheres. These electric rings of the curved pressure gradients create biconvex and biconcave lenses as they pass through each other, spiraling inwards and outwards within the cubic wave fields. The pressure gradients within cubes as demonstrated in this image with male red hemispheres and female blue hemispheres highlighted. The seven locking positions of the octave wave of elements is created by these pressure zones and is shown here accompanied by the names of the elements found in the carbon octave, thereby revealing the locking angles for each of the elements of this octave. The intersection of spiraling electric waveforms creates biconvex lenses which generate heat from coal by bending the waveforms into smaller and smaller rings with higher electric potential due to their immense compression and rapid motion. This image demonstrates how the still magnetic light is divided from the cathode planes of the pure white sexless light of the inert gases into male red spectrum and female blue spectrum vortices, which seek each other as mates in anode centers to balance their sex-divided condition of imbalance. This painting by Russell shows the process of male and female divided electric lights as they radiate through each other in their cathode dominant open hole condition via concave expansion lenses. 
This painting by Russell shows the process of male and female divided electric lights as they inwind through each other in their anode dominant, closed hole condition of the inert gases, creating a spherical center via biconvex compression lenses as the cathode waves reach out from the horizontal inert gas cathode planes to meet each other in opposing corners of mutually shared cubic wave fields. The three interior cathode plates of the cube have these inert gas rings as well. The inert gas rings are compressed into spheres and ring systems, which we see in space and atomic systems. There are seven locking positions for these spinning rings in each of the nine octaves of matter of the universe. The wave amplitude is a shared locking position marked plus four, zero, plus four for male and female vortices creating an anode cathode sphere with male in one hemisphere and female in the other hemisphere divided by an equatorial inert gas cathode plane of stillness. Biconvex electric light lenses compress electricity inward generating heat, higher potential and rapid spiraling vortex motions. These are formed from cathode waves which compress spiraling electric wave forms from cathode planes of cold magnetic stillness to anode centers of intense cyclonic fury and heat. Here we see the collision of spiraling electric red male and female blue lights creating a yellow spherical body at the wave crest amplitude within the cube. The colored rings represent the open hole ring-like elements which are either male red dominant or female blue dominant in their composition depending upon their locking position in each octave. The carbon octave of elements is shown here. Biconcave electric light lenses expand spiraling electric light waves thereby lowering their potential and returning them to the immense cold of space and the omnipresent cathode planes of still magnetic light. Anode waves begin at centers of extreme motion and compression and end at planes of magnetic stillness where their motions are recorded in the inert gases, voided in stillness and reflected outward into neighboring wave fields while being radared back inward again to anode centers to be compressed so they may expand again in rhythmic balanced interchange perpetually. Seen in three dimensions, the biconvex electric light lenses become very obvious in this image. Here we also see the varying layers of curved electric potential in the ring systems of the inert gases, which give form to the spheres. These spheres pulse through each other, creating light lenses. The cathode dominant condition of the sphere is seen on the left, and the anode dominant condition is seen on the right as they interchange, each becoming the other. Spherical bodies are formed by the intersections of the inert gas rings on the three interior cathode planes of each cubic wave field. This diagram reveals the open holes or cathode condition of the rings which give form to the spheres. The spheres are created by the three mutually orthogonal sets of inert gas rings which bound the three interior planes of the cube. These waveforms are being repeated in the neighboring wave fields along with their anode counterparts and receiving similar waveforms from the neighboring wave fields, corners, and faces at the same time. The complexity of all the various ring systems produced by the varying potential of the inert gas rings which form spheres causes the curvature of light lenses which both compress and expand the electric waveforms into a myriad of possible shapes controlled by magnetic geometries for every imaginable physical shape in our universe. The cone bases and apices of the cathode and anode waves of the cube are seen here 
on the primary vertical plane of the cube. They create spheres when all inert gas rings meet on all three cathode planes of magnetic stillness. The waves produce a cathode-anode sphere where the spherical cathode and anode waves are pulsing through each other via rhythmic balanced interchange. This is a two-dimensional representation of how anodes and cathodes pulse back and forth between each other via rhythmic balanced interchange, each becoming the other, giving their electric light to each other, so they may give again perpetually. This animation is a fusion of the last one where we see the anode and cathode interchanging through each other. Walter Russell created this magnificent painting to describe the fusion of cathode and anode inert gas ring and sphere systems. The anode is showcased and highlighted in red to exhibit how the spherical centers of immense heat are generated by the interchanging of the cathode and anode waves. The opposite of the fusion image Russell painted would be a fission image like this with a hole in the center for cathode female preponderance. The anode condition of the inert gas rings would be superimposed over these rings with male and female color spectrums in the inverse of the previous image called fusion. Atomic structures are seen to display the concentric spheres created by the inert gas rings. These atoms look nothing like the Rutherford Bohr nuclear atom of academic indoctrination, nor the even more fallacious version offered by the dysfunctional quantum theory. The complexity of the light lenses is seen here, where there are lenses within lenses created by the rings of the inert gases, which are dividing the sexless still magnetic light into sexed pairs of male and female spiraling electric vortices of the bipolar electric universe. Atomic centers are formed at the wave field boundaries of neighboring wave fields, where the cathode waves which are reaching out from the interior cathode planes of one cube meet to form anode centers of cubes which interpenetrate each other. The inert gas ring systems that compose the inner three cathode planes of each cube and create spherical systems are seen here in the image on the left. They are shown on the right sharing an anode cathode center at the mutual wave field boundary of two cubes. This creates a third atomic center between the two cubes, which interpenetrates the other two cubes. This means that atomic systems are not separate, standalone entities, as shown in academia. Rather, they exist in and through each other, sharing their cathode planes and cube corners as anode-cathode meeting points, which center atomic systems. The interchange of the cathode vortex waves, which reach out from cube faces, creates the static electric motions of the cubes as direct reflections of the cube's cathode planes. The dynamic motions of the spiraling electric light forms are seen here, where the motions are transferred into neighboring wave fields via the corners of the cubes and create atomic centers there as well. The eight corners of each cube act as trihedral corner reflectors to bend spiraling cathode wave lights inward towards apices, which are the centers of other anode cathode centers as seen in the vertical purple bullseye face in this image. This bullseye represents a time-stopped fusion of both cathode and anode conditions of the inert gas rings as they appear together on the cathode plane, pulsing between each condition. The other three horizontal bullseyes are inert gas rings in their cathode condition with no anode centers shown for comparison. Note also, the octagon in the cube to the far right is another of the countless unseen still magnetic geometries which exist between the magnetic cube 
and electric sphere. Eight trihedral corner reflectors are also to be found at the center of each cube. The three inner planes of the cube create eight corner reflectors, which are the magnetic control for eight electric vortices as they thrust back and forth between the eight outer corner reflectors of the cube. This creates a very complex system of interlocking elements which all share their male and female electric lights with each other to give each other form. Cymatics offers empirical and tangible physical proof of Russell's cubic wave field model. It is a window into the unseen world of electric waves, in this case sound waves which are also electric, as they work together via expansion and compression to create every imaginable geometric form in the electric universe of motion. These images show how the curvatures of physical forms are created by the intersection of various sonic waveforms according to their specific frequencies. The more rapid the waveforms, the more complex the resulting structures become due to the increase in lenses created by an increase in the number of waveforms. Solid spheres can only occur where the six polyhedrons of cubes unite as one. Six square pyramids intersect with their apices pointing to the center of gravity of each cube. These square pyramids are bipyramidal halves of the octahedrons which interpenetrate neighboring cubes of the shared cubic faces. This image illustrates how the six polyhedron lens systems of the cube create and maintain gravity-centered spheres. Only four can be pictured here. These six lens systems are lenses for billions of lens systems contained within them. Every microcosmic lens in every macrocosmic lens system focuses its gravity at the same point. The supreme effort of nature is to compress her nine stratted hollow wave bubbles of light into incandescent spheres of light, within which the Creator records all form of mind idea for unfolding into the light wave formed images which constitute creation. Suns are the storehouses of mind idea. Suns are the seeds of all creation. Solar systems are the seeds of suns. Through the planets of suns, all idea of mind is unfolded into image forms and the drama of creation made possible. That is the purpose of suns. Through the light of mind, man acquires all knowledge of idea. Through the light of the sun, man may acquire unlimited power to express his idea.